Hi, Riley Sai here. Today I want to talk about something your cells do all the time. Right now, as a matter of fact. Your cells are turning food into usable energy. This is called aerobic cellular respiration. But before we go to talk about what your cells are doing now, I think we need to talk about the famous process that plants use to make food in the first place, photosynthesis. Photosynthesis literally means using light, photo, to make things, synthesis. And that's what plants do. They make their own food using the energy from sunlight. Hey, food has to come from somewhere, and plants are the start of every food chain. You could put the sun before plants because that's where the energy comes from. See, inside the green parts of plants, the leaves, stem, and the uh, bark of Palo Verde trees from southwestern Mexico are special structures called chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are actually what makes these parts of plants green. They're actually cellular organelles and are kind of the opposite of mitochondria. The chloroplasts have chlorophyll, which is green pigment. This is what absorbs energy from, from sunlight. This energy is used to power photosynthesis. Photosynthesis takes water, which comes from the plant's roots, and carbon dioxide, which comes through small openings called stomata, and breaks them apart into individual atoms. It then puts them together in a large molecule called glucose. The energy from light is stored in the chemical bonds of glucose. Glucose is a simple sugar, and the plant uses it for food. Photosynthesis also makes oxygen as a byproduct. This is released into the air through the stomata, but not all of the oxygen is released. In order to grow, the plant uses the glucose it just made and breaks it down again to get useful chemical energy. This chemical energy was the energy from light that was stored in the chemical bonds of the glucose molecule. Now, the glucose is needed anywhere the plant needs to grow, like the roots or the trunk of the tree, things that aren't green and can't do photosynthesis. So somehow the plant moves the glucose to where it's needed. Your body moves things like glucose around using your cardiovascular system, the bloodstream. Well, plants don't have a cardiovascular system, but most of them do have special vascular tissue, which lets them move material like glucose and oxygen around to where they are needed. After the materials are in the right place, the plant can use the energy in glucose. This is done by another process called aerobic cellular respiration. This happens in the mitochondria of the cells. You might remember them as the powerhouses of the cell. They take the sugar, glucose, and oxygen and break them apart into special temporary chemicals called adenosine triphosphate, or ATP for short. These can carry the energy to other parts of the cell to be broken down for energy. Two other things that aerobic cellular respiration makes are water and carbon dioxide. So plants do photosynthesis to make food, then use that food in other parts of the plant. They also store some of the glucose for later use. That's why plants are called producers. They produce their own food. And now the animals come into the picture. They can't do photosynthesis, so they have to get their energy some other way. They eat, consume other organisms to get the food they need. If they eat plants directly, they're called primary consumers. If they only eat plants, they're also called herbivores. If they eat other animals to get food, they're called secondary consumers, or tertiary or quaternary, etc., depending on how far away from the plants they are on the food chain. However they got the food, they digest it, breaking it down into nutrient molecules, including sugars. Then they use that handy cardiovascular system to move the sugars around to the parts of the body that need the energy. 
Once there, the cells absorb the sugar and send it to mitochondria to be turned into usable chemical energy, ATP again. Now, let's look a little deeper at the equations for photosynthesis and aerobic cellular respiration. The equation for photosynthesis is 6H2O plus 6CO2 plus light, aero, C6H12O6, plus 6O2. Uh, let's just simplify this to water plus carbon dioxide plus light, aero, sugar plus oxygen. And that aero means produces or makes. And the chemical equation for aerobic cellular respiration is C6H12O6 plus 6O2 makes energy plus 6H2O plus 6CO2, which we'll simplify to sugar plus oxygen makes energy plus water plus carbon dioxide. And now let's put the two equations next to each other. Photosynthesis. Water plus carbon dioxide plus light makes sugar plus oxygen. Aerobic cellular respiration. Sugar plus oxygen makes energy plus water and carbon dioxide. Look closely at them. Do you notice anything about them? They're reflections of each other. One uses water and carbon dioxide, the other makes it. One makes oxygen, the other uses it. When plants make sugar and oxygen that they don't use to grow, they can be used by animals to do aerobic cellular respiration with. And the water and carbon dioxide that's made by aerobic cellular respiration and just tossed out is used by plants to do photosynthesis. The two processes are complementary. They need each other. Now, you might be wondering about that word aerobic. It means with oxygen. If you're running a lot, so much that you can't get enough oxygen to the muscle cells, then the muscles can't do aerobic cellular respiration. They use another kind of cellular respiration, fermentation. Fermentation isn't as efficient. It doesn't produce as many ATP molecules. It also produces a substance called lactic acid, which can make your muscles ache until the body can break it down. Aerobic cellular respiration needs photosynthesis. And photosynthesis needs aerobic cellular respiration. One makes the raw materials for the other. That's it. Riley Sigh out.